Hi VC, uh, Dave back with you again. Um, uh, so uh, before I update with some recent uh, finds and pickups, uh, before I go on, um, just as uh, Bobby Gas, um, I know that um, you gave some VCLT to Ben when he was coming over from Canada for, for myself. Um, I haven't yet managed to, um, to get that off Ben. Um, uh, I'll, I'll get into that in a minute because it kind of ties in with the um, uh, first item I'm going to show. Um, last Sunday, um, here in Cork, I went to see uh, Roy Harper in concert. Um, Roy Harper, who is uh, recently 75, um, I, I, I never managed to actually catch him live, even though uh, he actually lives um, not too far away. He lives about six, 50 or 60 miles away. Uh, but um, yeah, so it was my first time seeing him in concert. Um, now, Ben Costello had actually booked a ticket for it, and I was due to, to meet up with him, and he was going to bring the VCLT from Bobby with him, but um, due to unforeseen circumstances, uh, Ben had to cancel. Uh, so went along to the concert myself absolutely fantastic show from um, Roy Harper um, yeah just blew me away completely uh, I was with my other half um, uh, now that prior to this I had absolutely nothing by him and uh, Stormcock uh, his most acclaimed album was Hi I'm on one list and uh, as as anyone who's tried to 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 um to pick it up will know it, it's extremely expensive. Uh, originals are, are are nearly impossible to find, and even reissues um are very thin on the ground. But as it happens, it's been reissued on Roy Harper's own um, label, um, Science Friction, and there was a lot along with. Is his back catalog um, is now available to buy from the website, and I'm at, at the concert. I did manage to pick up a copy of this new reissue. Um, very nice job has been done on it as well. It's been remastered by Roy Harper himself. Um, I, I I managed I. Um, Roy Harper himself came out, came out at the end. Uh, he was kind of mobbed by these this big group of um, I presume they're kind of hardcore fans. But I did manage to get him to sign um, the record. Um, my other half was getting kind of impatient, and I wanted to get him to sign it. But I uh, uh, I just kind of said to him, Roy, would I, I think he was about to go, and I said to him, Roy, would you mind signing this? And uh, he, he obliged, and. Um, so that is uh, that is his signature there at the end. Uh, yes, this is an absolutely fantastic Acid Folk album, uh, comprised primarily of four long tracks. And um, yeah, it had been on my want list for a long, long time. Uh, also had um, vinyl copies of Flat Baroque and Flat Baroque and what's it called? Uh, and Life Mask, but uh, I'm, I could only afford to grab this, but. Um, uh, very happy to have seen him live and to finally have this fantastic acclaimed album in my collection and to, and to have got it signed by Roy Harper himself. So, um, um, yeah, fa fantastic, um, fantastic gig. Um, yeah, okay, so that was on the, that was on, sorry, that was Thursday, yeah, that was Thursday of last week. Last Sunday, I went to a record fair and again managed to pick up some long time want list items. Uh, a seller who I've bought a lot of stuff off in the past um, scored two uh, King Crimson albums which I was missing. Now this one, red, uh, very hard to pick up. Uh, originals of it are original. It came, it came out on Island Records in 1974, and that particular pressing is extremely expensive. Um, this is a, a 1977 repress on Polydor. 
um, go. And um, yeah, so this I, yeah, uh, I, I got two, so I'll, I'll go into what I paid for it in a minute. Um, yeah, so yeah, this is just a superb album. Um, yeah, many people say it's their best. Um, I, 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 I won't dispute that, but I, you know, I, 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 I've, I've really kind of dipped my toe into the, the King Crimson kind of universe, so to speak. But um, I, I don't. There's so much of their stuff that I'm missing, but this is one that I was really, really looking for, and I'm very, very glad to get it, to get hold of it. Um, I, I grabbed it along with. Um, Two seconds there. Along with another King Crimson that I was looking at, I was missing. Now this is Islands. Um, this actually came out before. Um, I think this was possibly the fourth one, if I'm not mistaken. Third or fourth, I think. Yeah, Islands came out in '71. Uh, again, this is not an original. This is a late '80s reissue. Um, on uh, EG, EG, that's um, editions, edition, edition something, uh, anyway, never mind. Anyway, it, it's, it's yeah, originally came out in 71, so late 80s reissue. Um, the two of them, uh, this and red, I got the two of them for 30, 30 euros. So 15 euros each, which, uh, as I've explained before, is kind of very, very, almost exactly the same as $15. So, yeah, so pretty pleased with that. Um, this is not as good, yeah, this, this, yeah, this is a pretty good album, but um, um, slightly kind of divides people. But, um, yeah, it is still a very, very decent album. Uh, not, not quite up there with... With some of their best work, but um, still, it's very pleased to um, to uh, have it in the collection. Uh, this is quite now, Lark's tongues and aspects. Now that's the one one that I'm really kind of looking for. Um, but anyway, I'm sure I will pick it up at some point. But anyway, moving on. Uh, the third item which I picked up at the fair, which I got from a different seller, and um, now I I actually had never heard of this this group or this album, but um, the fact that it's on Mute Records and the title sounded kind of intriguing. Six six modular pieces, and uh, this is about by a band called Appliance. Uh, Appliance, British band, active in the late 90s, early noughties, um, I think they're kind of on a hiatus, they, they haven't really released anything since about 2003, but this came out in the year 2000, this is essentially a mini album, and it's uh, best described as kind of electronic, kind of post-rock, um, yeah, very, very decent album, I, I didn't pay much for this, I only paid six euros, but um, I, I, I kind of bought it on a whim, didn't without knowing anything, without being familiar with this act. But I really, really like it. Uh, by the way, that the original price tag, uh, Comet Records, uh, th that's a record store that used to be here in Cork, maybe up. Uh, it was. I, me I remember it being around in the eighties and nineties, um, but um, a bit of a blast in the past. But um, anyway. Uh, yeah, nice, um, it, interesting. I really like that. You know, kind of took a chance on it without knowing what it was about. Um, now, Scott Walker. Uh, there was a movie was released recently called um, "The Childhood of a Leader." A movie, basically, kind of about um, a fictional fictional tale of a, a European fascist leader. Uh, in the wake of the First World War. Now, uh, the, the movie was being shown in my local independent cinema, and I did mean to go see it, but on the night, uh, something came up and I wasn't able to go, And uh, but I, I'm going to try and... I still haven't seen it, but I'm going to try and catch it. But anyway, uh, the soundtrack album 
Um, soundtrack is by Scott Walker, the legendary Scott Walker. And uh, now this is quite unusual in that um, there is no vocals on this, so one of Scott Walker's most distinctive um, elements, that of his voice, is missing from this. But this is an orchestral, um, an orchestral um, uh, piece, and this is very, very. If you like modern classical. Um, you will like this, believe me. This is this is I I personally think this is superb, even if it's you know missing you know the vocals which you kind of you know are so strongly tied to you know Scott Walker when you think of Scott Walker you think of his voice, and but you know you just completely forget that and I, I really really enjoyed this and um, and it is on the 4AD label. Um, uh, I got that in my local independent record store. Now I also got um, on a different day. I got a new reissue of um, uh, this band Om. Um, uh, I, I recently showed their album Pilgrimage, uh, which is an album from 2007, which is reissued recently. Uh, this is. A reissue of an album that came out in 2009 and this is called God is Good and as with Pilgrimage this is an example I suppose again of kind of spiritual drone kind of heavy heavy spirit <laughs> I don't know if you well it's hard to categorize but it's basically kind of um, spacey spacey heavy psychedelia with a kind of a weird kind of um, uh, kind of uh, Buddhist kind of um, spiritual element and um, my one gripe about this album is, is that it is way too short uh, it's just over half an hour long and you really kind of um, um, you really kind of you know wish that you know could be a bit longer but uh, nonetheless um, it's very, uh, it is a very decent album indeed but perhaps perhaps for the price um, it is a little bit short, you know, you're not getting a huge amount of music um, for your book, so to speak. Um, I'm going to finish up with two second-hand albums, which I got, which I picked up. Um, now, Ben, Ben Costello, and Jimmy Earl of Suave, um, you will both know the shop, the um, skateboard shop run by the two guys from Spain. Um, Another long time want list item is uh, Shamal by Gong. Uh, this now this is um, this was released. Uh, I think it was released in either seventy five or seventy six. Um, I can't be. It, it seems some sources say seventy five, some say seventy six. But anyway, uh, released after the, um, David Allen left. So this was. Um, at this point, Pierre Morlain took over, so um, uh, largely instrumental. Uh, there's not much vocals featured on this, which may which may please some people because I know that you know. I know Ben, <laughs> you you don't particularly like that whole um, kind of David Allen kind of vocal pix stuff about pixies and stuff. But yeah, that that is completely absent on this album. Um, Steve Hillage features on this as well. I think this is that. I think he left after this as well, or he left kind of before it was released. Um, yeah, th this is an original Spanish pressing um, on um, on Virgin. So please have that in my in my collection, um, adding to my my small but growing gone collection. And last item, I got this in the same place on a different day. Now this is a this is a group who whom I have to credit um, Derek Derek Vaughn. Uh, I know I only know this band through him featuring them. Uh, this is Catherine Wheel. Um, Catherine Wheel kind of shoegaze, kind of heavy heavy shoegaze um, band. Active in the early 90s, a British band, 
and, and of course Scott Walker again um, uh, that, that's yeah that's the, that's the picture that's featured on um, Scott Walker's debut album um, and the re this uh, yeah I'll, I'll explain this is a this is an EP and it's called 20, tw the 20th Century Man and it is main track title track is a cover of a Scott Walker track and um, there's also a cover of that's when I reach for my revolver which it was originally released by um, Mission of Burma uh, also covered by Moby if quite a few people have covered it and two two tracks by two original uh, tracks so yeah uh, yeah really really like this um, uh, at least on Fontana uh, in 1992 this is an original um, uh, Derek himself commented when I, when I showed this on Facebook that these are hard enough to find so um, please with this pick up um, and I will be looking up for more by by that band okay uh, I'm going to leave it at that for now um, possibly I'm not sure if um, um, Freddie Big Star is going to, is going to do another to do the 1980 update this weekend, but uh, I will definitely be doing a response to that if, if that is the case. But until then, um, uh, thanks for watching, everybody, and have a great week.